Let me ask you a question, brother. What is going on with black folks in the year 2000? Uh, we're in 2004 now. But what is going on with black folks, man? I mean, are we suffering from a mental illness or, or what, man? Because we have almost become the enemy when it comes to each other. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, it's, part, it's, it's, it's definitely a mental illness. In order to get some help on this, we want to pull some stick to the ancestors. Uh, uh, and in this particular case, when we say the ancestors, we talk about the gods, too. Um, they are our ancestors. We used to be gods. So we want to stick to a, a particular couple ones and then get the ball to roll it. Rabanda, Rabanda, Rabanda. Ashe. Ashe. Mante de Agua. Ashe. Mante de Luna. Ashe. Mama Shola. Ashe. Santisa Mubuete. Ashe. Francisco Cieti Reyes. Ashe. Uh, 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 Santisa Mopija Emet. Ashe. San Simone. Ashe. La Spiritual Centre Aquilas. Ashe. El Cristo Rey. Ashe. El Cristo Negro. Ashe. Awas, Awas, Awas. Ashe. Newt, Haddock, Rahul Akiwit. Ashe. Ishtar, Molu, Ashe. Ashe. I say, 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 Um, 
um, number one, we did have our brains ripped out in slavery, which leads to a lot of black psychology. And it doesn't necessarily necessary because we also can include the Africans and, and, and all, because the simple fact, part of us went through slavery, part of us also went through a form of colonization. You see what I'm saying? And all was colonized in history, which adds to a part of black psychology. Uh, uh, being historically illiterate is a psychosis. It is a deficit, and it is a mental illness. That's like somebody selling you a Microsoft computer, a Microsoft software, and not giving you any instructions, no manual how to use it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Somebody giving you a, a, a high-tech piece of technology and not giving you any type of instructions on how, uh, how to use it. That's what we are. We basically walk around the earth on a transient state, um, hoping we don't bump into nothing, and taking on all the characters of other people's society, parts of society, and all of other people's pathologies, as well as our own pathologies, in the aspect of not knowing, is this the blueprint? Is this the origin of why I act this way? Um, all because we don't have a, a guided manual. So we know that. Being historically illiterate is a direct link to mental illness. Because that means, even when you say, I'm going to try to think right, it also means, does these thoughts that you are thinking you think right, are these thoughts actually your own? Mm -hmm. So it's like I said, the concept of freedom, we may not know because our thoughts might not even be free. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a, uh, in a in a check cashing place one day. You all familiar about that in the black community. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another form of, of black psychology. White folks either email their bills in the phone bill, or uh, they pay them in, uh, through direct deposit. Right, on the computer, yeah, right. On the computer, mm -hmm. or they even mail it in. So they know that the phenomenon where you physically got to go down to a place and pay a bill, they know that the only people... They do that now, left behind, mostly black people. And, and the Spanish. And, 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 and the foreigners. And the foreigners. Foreign. Right. So they uh, used to have these places, the phone company used to have an actual place that whatever Bell South or Bell right. Atlantic or right. Northern Bell or whatever. You can go pay your bill. You go pay your bill. Right. They all relegated that now to check cashing places. You got to physically go, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, 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 and pay your bill that way. Now, um, I don't have to do it now because I, if, if, if I don't have the internet, I know somebody who does have the internet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I call them up and say, yo, pay this bill over the phone, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's how it's done now. But before the transition happened and stuff, they really shut. Before we realized we was going to have to do it, they said they really shut black people out. And they had to go to these check cashing places. Mm -hmm. So I'm up in the check cashing places. It was like 99. 1999, up in the check cashing place. I got to go pay a telephone bill. Some other guys up in there coming in to pay a bill, a telephone bill. And while he's there, the cop comes and is writing, a, uh, writing out a ticket on his car. He runs out of the building, meets the cop head on, and gets there before the cop can finish the ticket. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the cop still writes him a ticket. He walks in frustrated, knowing that it was really messed up. Because he got there before the cop really... Right. You know. He walks in, and I looked at him and go, here you are paying a bill. Mm -hmm. And while you're paying a bill, you're receiving another bill. Mm -hmm. And so you say, we free. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and said, oh, we free. Oh, we are free. I'm looking at this damn fool saying, <laughs> you don't get it, man? The concept here that uh, the only reason why you're saying you're free is because somebody told you you were free. Now, that's psychology because in the book, The Cult Technology of Power, which is the Illuminati Handbook, mm -hmm. they say if you want to put a people in slavery, the first thing you do is to tell them that they are free. <laughs> he said, as long as you don't have a monarchy, People get jealous of royalty, mm -hmm. uh, monarchy. Mm -hmm. He said, as long as you don't have a monarchy, as long as you have a process that so-called 
says that that leader was put there by your vote or by your choice, then the people will go to sleep because they will think in actuality they have some input into the government's process. And so therefore, you can actually uh, put them in slavery. And the only thing you've got to do is report what you want that the government is doing on your behalf. Not only do you do that, you, can, you, you choose on what you want to report on. Because obviously the government is into millions of things that the people don't even know exist. And they don't even have to report on it. Only thing they got to report on is um, health care, child care, education, you know what I'm saying? Energy, spending, you know what I'm saying? The basic things like that. And so basically you train the people into what you want them to inquire about. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm coming from here? Right. Train. This is a basis of mind control. So now, when it comes to black folks, we have a basic blueprint on how to think. And so therefore, it's already been preset for us. And they know that we don't have to deviate from it, and the majority of us don't. This is why the white man is always confused when they'll find some black person that's thinking of something that's outside of what black people normally do. Like, take for instance, um, they got a series, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and they got a series of stores called Kroger's mm -hmm. down in Atlanta. Um, they automatically, at first, these stores used to have health food products in the white community. Because they just automatically thought that black people weren't in the health food. Right. You know what I'm saying? And for the most part, if there's anybody that's going to not be in the health food, it's going to be a massive, there's going to be a lot of black people. Exactly. Because we know that basically, as us being conscious, one of the main things with black people is we have, is, 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 is their diet. Right. When we find out, when we fall by the wayside. But they put the health food stuff in the black community in the Kroger's in the black community, and which was a couple of shelves, and the stuff, they couldn't even keep the stuff on the dog on shelf. So here they, they underestimated black people. Mm -hmm. And now they got a whole entire back section of the show, of, of, of the store that's completely health food wise. So um, here it goes again, we have certain blueprints that's set up for us in, on, on, on the other hand, the way black people think. Right. We automatically think that certain black people are certain ways. So it's not just white folks thinking this way. Black people automatically think that certain black people fit one criteria, mm -hmm. one monolithic type of thought form. And so therefore, you are, when you come to them, they are already trained to have a preconceived notion on how you're going to act, act and how you're going to behave and basically what you're going to say or basically who you are. But now, in the mass level, because it's a program thing, we see thousands of black people that fit the same mold. Mm. That fit fit the same mold. Right. And all uh, also too. So it's it's so it becomes it's it's a two two old system. Number one, it is a institutionalized process that sets in mold this black pathology. On the other one, it is the condition of the black pathology that has now made mental illness a tradition in the black community. Let me give you an example. This is a small thing before we get into this. Um, I'm down in Mullins. South Carolina? South Carolina. In the 70s, I asked a person, what you eat? He said, I ask potatoes. What the hell is ice potatoes? Ice potatoes. It means Irish potatoes. Okay. But I heard a bunch of Negroes down in Mullins when I was growing up always say ice potatoes. This means that some Negro in the black community <laughs> made that up, huh? mispronounced, <laughs> I couldn't say Irish potatoes, mm -hmm. and said ice potatoes. And everybody else used it. And, every, and it caught on that everybody else used it <laughs> by thinking that this is the right 
pronunciation because we got cancer that exacerbated itself mm -hmm. amongst a set group of people, you see what I'm saying, who took pathology, you see what I'm saying, as the standard. Mm. Now that might be a small, that might be a small indication, but it also goes to say how our thought patterns. We can have mistakes that can come about in the community, and they become standard. Mm-hmm. They become standard. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Um, there's a whole thing. There is no honor among thieves. That means that the thieves set up a certain code because the environment around them is this person here done got over on me. So therefore, um, we all get over on each other because, it, you know, because everybody in this community is the same way. Like, take hey, instance, I'm up in uh, New Jersey. I met a brother who worked in the prison system. No, he worked in the jailhouse. In the jailhouse, they get a lot of people, and uh, uh, they have these brothers, they have these some brothers up there, they're trying to teach these people a certain amount of knowledge and information. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, he said it's, he said it's kind of coming kind of hard to say anything to the prisoners. I said, why? He said, because it's such a criminal environment. So when they in there, they're in about survival of the fittest. So if I step to them and say, the white man is this, and you don't need to be doing this because this is the way the game is set up. Mm -hmm. He said, by them being on a survival mode, he said they will use the information that I gave them mm -hmm. to help them, they will use it as leverage okay. and some form of blackmail or bribery to get Something that they want in that survival mode, and they'll use that against me. Mm -hmm. He said, so I've had brothers that I've tried to help. And they're in the survival mode. They go, yo, I need this. You go, you know you can't do that. They're like, well, I'm going to tell the man what you said about the white folks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell the man what you said about this particular policy. So that means you got people that have gone beyond just trying to uh, maneuver and to counter the atrocious system that they find themselves into to be in a part of a victim of that system, whereas in actuality, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They are trying to, they, they have come to a survival aspect of that system, whereas they become, the end result is, you see what I'm saying? They are basically a part of the system and help fuel that system. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because they've got caught and trapped in it. And all. So it's no more counter. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. It's a maneuver to automatically hold, hold that system. So they help foster that system. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So we, you go into a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to ask you three questions that, 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 I, that I observe as a major contributor to the insane psychosis of black, black people. Yes. First of all, it's religion. The black church, because the black church yes. is not what it used to be, number one. Right. The media, right. number two, and music. Now, can you expound on them, okay. start with the religion, start right. with the black church, because... Right. Okay. First of all, first of all, um, the black church used to act as a bridge and a counter-cultural bridge in a society that would actually have a banner of cohesiveness about it that would actually help black people. We turned to this particular institution. We actually made it our own. Mm -hmm. We made it conducive, you see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to our therapy. Now that's historical. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all we had. But because it was set up in the beginning as the basis of a tool of conquering. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Of a tool of turning one culture into something totally different by wiping out that culture's existing um, doctrines of that particular culture, but actually 
wiping out another person's culture, ultimately, it would eventually turn into a cancer. And the same people that use that particular tool to raise us up would end up using that tool of being a part of that particular situation that would actually keep us down. So what was good for the first 100 years of the, from slavery from, from 1865 to damn near 1965 or 1975, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying, is now a cancer. You see, it's now a cancer because the simple fact is we, as a people, we are 21st century people and we need to go beyond certain doctrines of survival, you see, to a new paradigm, a new paradigm. And too often the church's philosophy can be used as something to keep us stagnant, keep us stable, and all this. Some people say, oh, he's just trying to get out of religion. And I'm, no, I'm trying to tell you here is the basis of the reason why you got grown people that can't think mm. is because when they was a child, they was taught that they was going to hell. Mm. Now, what is hell? Now, what is hell? Now, what is hell? Now, what is this place called hell that keeps people in fear? And, 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 and because I, I, I talk to people every day, and they are afraid. To, right. to, to question, they are afraid to venture because they feel some right. consequence that they're right. going to suffer. Now you got a sister who we just talking to. Hell, yeah. It's 53 years old. Mm -hmm. And 90% of what she learned 58 years ago, no, 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 50, 53 years ago, no. the 90% of the stuff she learned, um, let's say, uh, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, 48 years ago, it's not even a part of our own thought process. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because we learned this at a very early age. Now, I'm looking at the psychological ramification of what I'm trying to say here. She was also taught around the same time that she was learning about the devil and God and Jesus and all of this mm -hmm. and hell mm -hmm. about the boogeyman. Right. Everybody was scared of the boogeyman at an early age. Mm -hmm. They tell you, don't go in that black closet, don't cut off the light. Don't go in the basement. Don't no. go in the basement because the boogeyman going to get you. Right. And this was horrific and it was terrifying to us. But as we got older, we learned, you see what I'm saying, that these certain things man. didn't exist. Didn't exist. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason why it affected you because you was too young to know that at the time. Mm -hmm. But you learned that these things didn't exist. Well, it's the same concept with the hell concept. We will learn, we learn that the hell concept, you go into hell after you die, and all. And these particular concepts, remember now the Hebrews didn't even have it, like Deoc said, until a hundred years before the so-called Christian era. And they borrowed all that from the Egyptian Book of Gates, which that concept is not even talking about um, some place up under the earth. It's talking about conditions of the soul and of the mental process and an initi initiation process of the soul, the thought process, and how you illuminate from one level to the other. But, we got this hell concept, and we got grown people now, that all they had to do to neutralize the fear was to learn more about it. Now give me an example, because I'm still in that dress here. Um, with me, when I started doing the research, I did something that I noticed it never dawned on a lot of black people to do. We have been driven by fear of going to hell, and the devil is our enemy, mm -hmm. although we know that this mythological character don't exist, don't exist and we, but yet we have taken all that is going wrong with us and put it on something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Because some, some doctor or some fool told us that that's the person behind all that goes wrong in your life is safe. Right. So we grew up this particular way. It never dawned on millions of black people, well, why don't you just study Satan? Mm -hmm. Have an extensive study into Satan and into hell. Mm -hmm. And 
had that dome there, they could have neutralized the situation to find out it's something totally different than a boogeyman concept mm -hmm. that they learned as a child. Mm -hmm. that, 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 they learned, that they learned as a child. So in this particular concept, and studying these concepts, you get hell, you get the word shell, a shield. Now in Hebrew, let's take the Hebrew version, because that's the version in which the Christian version is made up out of. You get the word hell, you get a word sheol in, in, in Kabbalah, and even in the book of Ethiopian book of Enoch. And in deeper Kabbalah, a Kabbalistic text, you get the word shell, the husk, the shell called kalipa, a husk, a shell. When you study the esoteric meaning of that, the word, the, the, the kalipa, the husk, the shell, and you get the word hell, the shell means the physical body mm -hmm. that houses the soul. The soul is trapped in a physical body and in a dream state of an illusion. So, in the Hebrew aspect, the physical body is hell. Mm -hmm. So we live in hell because our soul lives into the physical body. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take the Gnostic, which is pre-Christianity, here it is, the Christians talking about pre-Christianity. Well, that's a contradiction. I thought this only existed when Jesus came. So now you're telling me there was a Christian that existed before Jesus. That's a contradiction. Well, let's take the Gnostic, which is pre-Christianity, which is actually later-day Egyptian, ancient Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And they talk about Hyle. Hail, Hyle. And they said, and Hylix. They said it. Hylix is the people that live in Hyle. And Hylix means physical person, and Hyle means physical earth. Mm -hmm. So you already in hell based on Hebrew and based on pre-Christianity. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. Based on pre-Christianity. Right. You go to the Greek thing, you get Hades, you get torturous. You see what I'm saying? And torturous. Torturous is supposed to be the deepest part of hell, but when you deal with it on a physiological route, torturous is the lower gastrointestinal tract. It's still inside the body. So these are greater concepts that explain states of condition on a spiritual level than a physiological level. And yet, you can get millions of black people and millions of white folks is trapped in this thing just on the basis of ignorance. Just on the basis of ignorance. Mm -hmm. They're trapped on this. You see what I'm saying? Right. So we live in hell. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, that's true, man, because, you know, again, you know, a lot of people have a very skewed perception of, of, of uh, the way they see spirituality. And they, they, they equate that, that, that connection with religion. And as, and as a result, our people are in a, in a comatose state mm -hmm. because they're not thinking. Like, you know, you got some Christians that think that the Israel of the Bible is the same Archimedes Jews that occupy Israel today. It is today. today. And because of that teaching, they support what the Israelis are doing right. to the Palestinians. Right. I, I remember one time I was on the train, the, the subway down in Atlanta, and it was a black woman jumping all over the thing because there was some, she, 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 by being in the south, you know, you go up north, you see Jews all the time. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But down south, you don't have the Jews that dress in the various Hasidic well, type God. Mm -hmm. north, so you can't tell them from white folks. Right. You know, they all are all white in the first place. Right. But I'm talking about the one that looks a different type of Jew. Right. These Jews, for some reason, was at some convention down in Atlanta, and they had on all the black. You know, mm, right. So they were on the train. Right. And this black woman, for the first time, old black nigga, mm -hmm. you know, this woman had to be in her 50s. Mm -hmm. This is the first time she identified a Jew outside of somebody saying they're Jewish. You know, let alone black people, they are not Jews, you know. That's a whole other story for black people down there. But this is the first time she saw that Hasidic Jew. 
she jumped all up on the train saying, God bless you and God bless Israel. Because if Israel falls, the world falls, and I know that my salvation is based on you all surviving in Israel. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this goddamn ignorant <laughs> nigga woman <laughs> jumping up with these stink, nasty ass Hasidic Jews. <laughs> with a tradition that don't even resemble nothing to come out of the Bible. Right. <laughs> and all, and so she doesn't know that these people, all of the European Jews, get their origin of being converted into Judaism mm -hmm. in Spain. Mm -hmm. You see, in Spain and in Europe, you see what I'm saying, at, uh, 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 at a time when the Moors ruled, mm -hmm. and all, and then later on, Usurping somebody's culture, or usurping and taking the name, because it's all that European culture, mm -hmm. and taking this name and masquerading as something that is indigenous and ancient. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. because she don't know this, she's thinking that these fools, because she saw the first time in her life, took her 50 years, because she's lived down south all her life, mm -hmm. to identify as a person that's not a white person, mm -hmm. you have to say they're Jewish, she might see a star of David or something. Right. She see these people and all, and she's seen on TV these people in the black hats and all this kind of thing here. Mm -hmm. And she's going all crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She, she's going all crazy. And I know that they're probably looking at her like saying, this damn idiot here don't even know. We are in a perpetual state of masquerading as something indigenous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, let me, let me ask you a question. When a person comes to realization, that there's something wrong with Christianity. Like, uh, let me ask you a question. Is there a historical Jesus? No. And if not, explain, explain. It's a good, it's a good question. Because no. everything around Christianity or any religion is based on the belief system. And belief system, and where they have taken sublime mythology. And as, because the Christian, because it's a plagiarized origin, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you ask them, number one, what is Christ? They will say Greek for Christos. Mm -hmm. Then when they deal with the word Jesus, it is a Greek word. Mm -hmm. And as Walter Williams showed you, the Jupiter, Zeus, is called Jupiter. Zeus is called Jupiter in Rome. And Jupiter is called Zeus in Greece. So you get the J for Jupiter, and Zeus, and you get the word Jesus, which is the, the Hispanic, and that's all that to this day. Right, everybody uh, makes Jesus. Jesus. Right. Because there is no J in the Hebrew alphabet. Right, matter of fact, the J didn't come to 1630. Okay, so why what you're talking about here is, you got not only Jesus being a Greco-Roman concept, but you got Christ being a Greco-Roman concept, or a Greek concept. So I don't want to need to ask the Christians if... Christianity came as a new doctrine was never on the earth before. Why can't you give me the Christian name? And if you say that Jesus is Hebrew, why you don't call him something by the Hebrew name? I don't want to hear nothing about Yeshua. No. You don't call him Yeshua. Right. Never have. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't use Hebrew in English. Well, you use, well, David is Hebrew. Moses is Hebrew. All the rest of them are Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, so why don't you give a Hebrew name? Why you couldn't use Yeshua or Yeshua than to use Jesus? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so my concept here is it's, it's plagiarization, and not only, is it, it, not only did you plagiarize something, um, you can't even explain its origin, you see what I'm saying, as being exclusive to so-called so Christianity of this Christian movement. Now let's get into that particular concept here. We need to understand this. The origin, we need to get to the origin of this. We even need to go to the, to the, to the basic fundamental concept that even lies behind the, the, the ancient mystery system religions like ancient Timet, ancient Samaria, even ancient Greek, which was a black race of people that they're not telling people about. And then even Coptic came before it. And, and, and the Coptic, and all this, we need, to, we need to understand. But let's go back to, let's go back to the ancient origin of this. And since they say Horus is predated before Jesus, which is the 
uh, Heru is the Egyptian Messiah, mm -hmm. which predates Jesus by 10,000 years. You see what I'm saying? And uh, by 10,000 years, and then we go to even Krishna, who predates him for thousands of years. Then we need to ask this particular question, and what is the root behind this thing? What is it really talking about? And in order to really understand what that means, that Christos means, it's an alchemical term. So we have to go back to the schools of alchemy in Egypt. In Egypt, we didn't have um, a religious system. So when they say, oh, uh, the pagans are people who didn't have a religion, they are right. They had an educational system where education, spirituality, and all of that was combined. And they didn't separate it based on moral doctrine. Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, you mean moral doctrine? In spirituality, moral no. You got your morality based on your rites of passage. Let me give you an example. You didn't need religion to be moral. Your society taught you certain things you don't do, certain do's and don'ts based on your culture. You see what I'm saying? Now, although we've had the last 2,000 years, white folks had to learn morality through religion, but that is a new political movement for morality because they needed morality because they didn't have a culture okay. of harmonious living. With anyone. <laughs> right. Even with themselves. So they needed a book on how to even function on the earth plane without eating each other and others. You see what I'm saying? And they needed it woven into their religion of their photographers of their aspect of what they would call a simulation of spirituality. Because it's not spirituality. It's mo mostly political. Mm -hmm. But they needed a, 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 a book or a doctrine, you see what I'm saying, to go by just to behave. Mm -hmm. And now we got the whole world is stuck in these religions, and the only thing they're doing is behavioral modification, and it has nothing to do with spirituality. You didn't have to learn how to behave in the indigenous cultures because it was part of your life of passage. You didn't do certain things because you was raised not to do certain things. Right. Now we know this just in the subculture of up from slavery. Black people didn't do certain things not because of Christianity. We didn't do certain things because we, but we, we, we created a counterculture of the greater society where we didn't do certain things. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the culture that was in, based on survival mechanisms, we had to take a strict path of common sense. You see what I'm saying? That later on became the blueprint of why America looks at us as being moral. That only started to deteriorate in the late 80s. Black people knew how to behave most of the 20th century. And based on various aspects of government input, drugs, and being in desegregation for about 20 years, the cohesiveness of our system of culture that kept us together started to erode. Let me ask you a question. There's a slight deviation, but it just hit my mind. But, you know, there were certain things that we used to wouldn't do. That's right. There were certain things, you know, Bobby, there were certain things based on our moral code as, as a people yeah, a that, that we wouldn't do. But now niggas will do anything they now. do anything. So what is it that has yeah, caused yeah. us to, to, to degenerate? That's right. That kind let me of give you an example. Let me give you an example. Stuff that we used to do that was morally right, it didn't have anything to do with the body. Anything. It was just a cultural thing. Right. If you were moral our morals or mores come from the moors. Mm -hmm. And these are things they had to teach the Europeans how to behave in Europe. Even taught them how to take a common bath. Because they were filthy. Filthy. Now, the morals, we did certain things. Let me give an example. I saw something back in 98. In the middle of downtown Atlanta, Georgia, which is the capital of the Confederacy. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you didn't do shit as niggas, you sure walked straight and narrow mm -hmm. down in Georgia. Because it was the capital of Confederacy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Hell, Stone Mountain is the capital of the Ku Klux Klan. They got a big old Confederate soldiers blasted on the side of the mountain down in Atlanta. Mm. Now here it is. We're in the middle of what used to be the Confederacy and in 1998. Black guy, a white woman, is walking down the street. She looked pretty nice. But she didn't look that nice to want this on something we would have wouldn't have dared done 20 years prior. We wouldn't have done it in the early 80s. These black guys were hollering and whistling and trying to get this woman's number. And it was going on crazy over this white woman. And they thought it was so fucking cheap. <laughs> and I said to myself, you wouldn't have dared done that in 1980. You wouldn't have done it in 1970. You damn sure wouldn't have done it in 1960 or 1950. Your ass would have, would have been dead for even thinking about it. Right. And stuff like that. It doesn't have anything to do with because white people let up and we, and we can legally do things like this. No, it was a weak. It was a certain standard mm -hmm. that you say you wouldn't dare even let a white woman know you even want her that way. That's right. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's right. And stuff. So these fools are out in the middle of fucking downtown Atlanta hollering at this white woman. You know what I'm saying? Uncouth. Uncouth. Another thing is uncouth. We had certain things we did in our community we didn't do around white folks. Mm -hmm. We had to set a standard on how people viewed us, because they were viewing us as savage. Right. Now I'm going to show you. And now we acting savage. Now we acting savage. I wouldn't really mind a damn bomb, because it's a reality. We got bombs. Okay. Niggas like panhandling bombs. Straight up. But what hurts me the most mm. is they'll go up to white people. Oh, God. All downtown. All downtown going up to white people. I'm like, <laughs> and now, you doing the fuck up thing about it? <laughs> If not people, it's 18, 17. Oh, these old niggas. Uh, or 20. Some people that was born, you see what I'm saying, post-segregation. Mm -hmm. And just didn't remember the old days. These are niggas that was <laughs> in their 40s, their 50s, their 30s. People who can remember a time. No pride, no nothing. When you didn't do shit like that. No pride, no these nothing. These are the same. What kind of... Yeah, you got now. When a nigga grew up, when his parents said, you don't beg white folks. That's the lowest level you can be. That's right. And you got niggas, I've seen niggas 45, 48 years old. They done deteriorated down to such a savage that they would go up to a white person and beg. They are, it's almost like they don't give a damn what it is. But then again, we going back to the question of what we talk about, which is black mental illness. You feel what I'm saying? Which is black mental illness. In the particular case, we understand about mental illness. It doesn't get better with time. It gets worse. Yeah. You know, it, it gets worse. But don't, because i got to go back to this religious thing first and get the origin of Christ. But we're talking about people that's not of the generations, you see what I'm saying, that uh, came afterwards, but the people who remembered certain guidelines we had in the community. That's right. Doing this shit. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So you've got to understand that if not only you're talking about a certain cohesive status that broke down because of us being outside of doggone segregation for a while when we were forced to do things, but you've got to understand that this has got something to do with some kind of mental illness. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So much of an intermental mental illness until now we're doing things that we didn't do. See, some mental illness is a start with a pattern of things that you used to do to get worse, worse, and worse. But I'm trying to figure out, in this mental illness, how the hell are you just going to all of a start doing some shit that you didn't used to do? They go up to white people just begging. You know, and, 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 and some white man was telling me, he said, you know, I got a damn daughter. She go to Georgia State. She said she got to take martyr. Because we ain't bought no car yet. He said, we should get on the damn bus, and it's the most humiliating thing. She said, because the damn niggas is all over her. Now, see me, I'm looking at the white man, and I'm like, one of the things, I, I, you know, I could be a nigga and get mad with what he said, but I know he's telling the damn truth. That's right. <laughs> he said, he, he said, every morning, 
Now, she's a real beautiful white girl. Right. Uh, one that is understanding of what these black men like. Right. He said every morning is a degrading thing. She got to get on a, a public transportation and stuff like that. And she says, these black guys is all over her ass. I think she's one of them white girls who got that new big booty. Yeah, yeah that, 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 uh, that, uh, Negro ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hook. Yeah. She might have some kind of genetic <laughs> shit in her past. But anyway, it's the right shit for these niggas to climb up on this white girl. Yeah. And she said it's the most degrading experience. And, all. And, and, and it's this type of thing, but well, let me give you another example. I'm talking to this guy. Uh, he went to the Clark Atlanta University. This is mental illness. And there, you got, if you've ever gone down to those five, they got five schools down there in Atlanta. They got three schools that's co-ed, Morris Brown, Morris Brown, uh, no, well, actually they got two schools that's co-ed, Morris Brown and Clark, uh, uh, male and female. Mm -hmm. Then you got a spell on a whole female college. But between the three schools, you got some of the be most beautiful women anyway. in the world. Mm -hmm. Now check this out. Here's a nigga going to school at Clark Atlanta University. <laughs> He's working at a pizza shop over near Emory University. And he all in love with this little white girl. <laughs> and I'm like, um, and he said, I'm, he said, you know, she got a white boy, and he, he ain't nothing, and he this. And all of she love that white boy to death and this kind of thing. And I'm trying to ease on in. And I'm like, I want to ask you a question. What make you think that she wants your black ass? <laughs> you saying that she's with a white boy and the white boy ain't shit. What make you think that she actually wants you? You in love with a white girl that ain't even looking at you at that way. Right. Oh, man, God, now I didn't think you would be looking at it that way, man. We in 2001, for God's sake, at the time when it was happening. I'm like, man, you... Don't you understand the concept? I say, if I was a white girl, I wouldn't want your stupid ass. But the point I'm trying to make, I said, now here it is. And this is what makes a psychosis. Because there's not enough for him to like white girls. Okay, if that's your thing, right. I understand that. Right. But in that age you stuff, if you want a white girl, mm -hmm. they got black girls that's walking around that look so white. And to if you white girl was your thing, they got a ton of them there right. that you can go and get. And so it's no excuse to the black woman, you got it all. Right, and everything. Everything. They got them, you have to look at, oh, you black. Mm -hmm. Right, so they talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you got them, a shade darker, on down to goddamn blue black. I'm like, you went there for fucking three and a half years, nigga. You couldn't find nothing that you got to go over to Emily and get a hillbilly cracker. He said, you know, she's raised down south. I said, first of all, let me explain something. You stupid ass nigga. <laughs> I said, let me explain something to you. I said, she's at Emory University. They call that the Ivy League of the South. Mm. I said, so now you're not just talking about a run of the mill Southern cracker. You don't know no better. I said, not only is she from the South, she's trained in certain traditions as being an upward, an elite cracker that we don't. Go beneath ourselves mm -hmm. with them old bullshit niggas. And you sitting up in here, talking about I'm about to quit school so I'm going to get a guitar <laughs> and go to fucking, go around the country trying to get a gig, <laughs> singing some rock and roll shit. I'm like, and this is an elite cracker, and this white boy is about to graduate school with her, and she going to pick you a nigga <laughs> with a guitar, and they even got a record deal, and shit, you see what I'm saying? Right. And ain't got no potential in shit because you ain't trying to finish. I'm just trying to say, not necessarily saying that the college education is, 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 is the ultimate. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to tell you how you crack this thing. Right. How she gonna choose you over a white boy and husband? They get ready to graduate in a damn semester. And you talking about walking around with a motherfucking guitar. <laughs> <laughs>
into the illuminating process of the end result or the final product of what a soul is supposed to be. That, my friend, is called Christos, Christ, Christ. So we're talking about an attainment coming from the alchemical process, and alchemy is the study of the soul, melanin, the particles of the universe, and all of this thing, and the process of something fermenting or transforming into something of another level. And they have taken that and made it into a historical person. Mm -hmm. And so you are taking a, an attainment or a process in which the soul does. Is it not written in your law that ye are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken? John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. And you have taken that particular principle and someone has stepped in and historicalized it by taking a historical figure or a human story of a person and taking the attributes of what Christ does, rise to a certain level of the, of the crystals of the soul, which is in every person, and has made it exclusively one man and got you worshiping the person for political terms. Mm -hmm. So no, there is no historical one. There is even the argument of black people now, that in, in the Afrocentric community, they're trying to paint a historical black Christ. Yeah. Even that is wrong. Right. Because you, when you follow this person as a person, you omit the process, which is both in both male and female, and one of the, also the problems with is, is a part of that particular rising of that energy is an ultimate feminine energy. So when we're talking about something that is beyond the physical aspect and all, you see what I'm saying, you do it a disservice to try to put it into a historical, not only a male, but a historical person when the process is talking about the alchemical process of what your soul is going to take regardless. Mm -hmm. It's going to do this whether you are walking around dead or not. Because ultimately, it's just like nature. A flower is going to bloom no matter what. It doesn't have to have a doctor to tell it to worship another flower. That's right. A dog don't need no book. Right. Don't need no book. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's going to happen because we're talking about a process of nature. So it's even in the movie X-Men. At the beginning of the first X-Men, they talk about how there's a mutation that happens. And these people become super beings, but the process might take thousands of years. But ultimately, there's a graduation point for every human on the, on the planet. And so we have now had someone slip in and give you this false doctrine, and you're worshiping this particular person. And in so many words, you are keeping dormant the true potential of your own soul. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And here's a white boy that sees it fit to know that if there's anybody that's going to make that particular step into that, it's going to be the oldest people on the earth because we were around long enough for it to happen. And so therefore, he is purposely giving us the religion on every corner mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't reach our full potential by giving our energy to some historical, and in this case, for most black churches, a white man. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. That Michael Angelo painted. Yes. The image. Right. That he painted. So no, there is no historical Jesus, but these religions foster this particular dormancy and this particular intrusion and what they call an incontinuance towards learning. You see what I'm saying? It fosters these things. So, so, so are you trying to say that, that the average black person's growth uh, spiritually has been retarded? It's retarded. It's studied. And it's studied because you can't grow. You can't, you can't nurture your children in your house to grow to potential adults if you are looking at some fictitious children someplace else mm -hmm. and giving all your energy to them other than your children. Mm -hmm. Well, the soul, when it's asleep, it's, it's, it's called a little baby, Hoppacrot. It's called Hoppacrot in Egypt. It's called Eros in Greece. It's called Cupid in Rome. And it's called the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus in, in Christianity or the baby Krishna you see, in, 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 in Hindu. So, so, so it's the same concept here. Your soul can't be nurtured, nurtured by turning outwardly when even the doctrines of Christ tells you that heaven is within. Right. You see, so heaven, heaven, is, heaven is within. So, yes, it does. It keeps the retardation possible and in place and intact. 
Now, 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 Bobby, we have been talking before, and most folks have done any research know that the Bible itself here consists of maybe some truth, some mythology, mm -hmm. some parables, mm -hmm. some some allegory, yes. all put together, all put together, and they can have a historical backdrop. So they chose Rome, which was a historical culture, and then, so if you take it and put it in a historical backdrop, you can fool people like, hey, man, so let me show you how this can be done. Let's, Let's create the same scenario over for the future. You know of, you know of, no, let's, let's take, no, I'm not going to use a historical person. Let's do, let's do this. You know of Spider-Man, a adventure comic book hero mm -hmm. that is contrived to convey a certain set of principles, but it is not a historical person. Right, not real. It's not real. Now, let's say a hundred years from now, you can go and take that historical Spider-Man and the attributes of Spider-Man, put it on a historical person, or say it's a historical person in history, tell it to a new group of people a thousand years from now, mm -hmm. a thousand years from now, get rid of the sources. Mm -hmm. I don't, I hide them. Mm -hmm. They don't know this is a comic book of Marvel Comics. Right. And they can start worshiping Spider-Man as the Messiah. And until they dig into the remote past, that's a conspiracy now. The, not, now, the church fathers and everybody who's doing this Spider-Man religion knows that it is a part of their duty to keep the certain amount of text hidden from the masses of the people. Then you can have people worshiping Spider-Man as the Messiah. Then it gets even worse. You can find one or two or three individuals that will go in and dig up their past and find out that Spider-Man is only a fictional comic mm -hmm. that has spiritual principles to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because it's got to have something to apply to your life. But it was a fictional comic of the 20th century that later on will turn into a movie in 1992, 9, 2002. But nevertheless, it was a fixed person. And they would go back and find out the truth and try to go back to the thousands of people now in the future that's worshiping Spider-Man as the one and only personal savior. And, no, and they will get scrutiny, they will get maligned, they will get vilified, and they will get ostracized and become a social pariah to that group of people by trying to tell them the truth is there never was no historical Spider-Man. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the same serious scenario that's going down now. Mm -hmm. you see? Right. Now, because it's not truth, and because ultimately it's detrimental for you to know, it's detrimental for you to know falsehood as a part of reality, it also is a form of mental illness. It's an abnormality. Mm -hmm. So it helps foster the mental illness by you not getting to the truth of why you even exist and what is your true origin of existence. Why am I a dog thinking I'm a cat? So in other words, are you, most black folks have a totally wrong concept of the God concept. Of the God concept. Now, let me ask you another question. A lot of folks don't understand the trick that's been played in the church because now a lot of the preachers are getting away from being salary. Now all of them going under the uh, uh, gift offerings. Right. Now, yeah. you know, now, now, if church is supposed to be separated from church and state, why does all the church have flags in them now? Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. You know that that's a government installation. A flag with a gold strip down the side. That's right. Which means, Average maritime law. Right. Which means that they are under the direction and the dominion of the government or the secret societies or whatever you want to call it that run the earth. You see what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, to let you know that this is not a new phenomenon, the black church itself, inception, was given by the Freedmen's Bureau. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And which is a which is a 
concept of the freed man from slavery, which is a part of reconstruction. But um, this inception happened and has always been a conspiracy. Do you know that they say that we didn't even have a census that's taken of how many people that's in the community, a black community? And it was the black preachers sometime in the 18, you know, in the early 1900s, the black churches got together. And they were the ones responsible for giving America the census of black people in the first place. So this church has always been a structure, you see what I'm saying, for government intervention. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The reason why I know it, there's a book called A Cult Technology of Power, which is the Illuminati Handbook. Um, and these are the secret societies that run the earth. One of their things they're saying, whenever the handbook was presented in the 1970s, they had this thing where white folks were getting out, out of religion. They weren't, um, it, it wasn't as big on a cohesive level as it is always have been with black people when a lot of white folks in the 70s from the hippie movement and when Vietnam almost took their children away from them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they did stay in the 1973 edition. 73 or 74, 30 years ago, I think it was 1974 edition of this occult technology power, which is the handbook of the people who rule us. If they all know religion might have taken a back seat in some places, we can always count on it being the tool that has worked for us over the centuries to keep people in place, and it goes right along with us keeping people in slavery. Mm -hmm. It's occult technology of power. So we know if they were going to say that in regard to white folks, you know that black folks are going to be on total lockdown when it comes to this particular church. Now, let me give you an incident that happened in the 19, 1950s. 1950s, some black people in South Carolina went to what would later on become the desegregation movement. And the only thing they did was that they were talking to some people in one part of the state was just having a discussion on desegregation and stuff. And these people in a place called Mullen, South Carolina, which ain't even on the fucking map. Yeah, because I ain't never heard of them until I heard you mention it. Right, it ain't even on the damn map. It's population 6,000. And it's almost, and it looks just like Mayberry. When you see the Mayberry, mm -hmm. it looks like Mayberry. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You got the movie, they had all of the things in a miniature level of what's called, and I grew up a block from downtown. So it looks like Mayberry. Mm -hmm with rural areas surrounding it. In the middle of nowhere, they these people from Mullins that ain't even on the map travel to a meeting in the early 1950s to just listen in on what would become civil rights legislation or what would become a civil rights movement, you see what I'm saying, of trying to desegregate the South. Mm -hmm. And there were just four people, four or five people present at this meeting. And when they got home, back home, in Mullen, South Carolina, they were from a church, the AME church. And when they got home from Mullen, South Carolina, these people, for the rest of their lives, would have problems finding decent jobs, and these were professional people. You see what I'm saying? Right. And they were tracked by the AME church. Mm. by some government officials. So if it could be in a town that ain't even on a fucking map, and these people get into some conspiratorial um, problems through the church, what do you think about church in the general society? Ruled by the government. Well, you know, we just had a situation up here in D.C. Actually, it was in Maryland, where a Baptist church where the president went and visited the church. And this guy actually let the person get up on the pulpit and kiss him on his forehead in front of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Now, what, how do you think, or what do you, how did the person have to pick that particular church? I mean, you know, you know in other words, how did he happen to pick that particular church to go to and 
this guy actually preaches against what the president does, but then he invites you to the church. Yeah. I don't understand the psychosis, man. Because we're talking about the same entity. To give you an example, they just had a war in the spring of the year. First of all, I'm trying to figure out not only why would the government go to, you just got into 2000. You didn't know whether you was going to even be around past 2000 because in the spirit world, they just don't know from all the bad deeds they did that the, the millennium came and, 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 and it's not 2000, at least 2001 because that was the actual millennium. Mm -hmm. And you get past that and you ain't shaking saying, woo, man, we didn't know but we might have thought that our shit, all the devious things and insidious things we have done all over the world, mm -hmm. that our shit might have ended. And you mean to tell me you get into 2003, and you just barely escaped the millennium, and you're going to do something like have a war, and not only have a war, but a bogus war at that. Yeah. One that you didn't have to have, but this is not the thing about the government, because the government is evil and going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not them. But how does the people allow it? The truth. Now, this even worse. We got a church on every corner. Every liquor store. Liquor store on every corner. Look at this, look at this. We got a church on every corner in the United States. The doctrine is that shall not kill. Mm -hmm. And you somehow manage in your history of colonization and the history of the 20th century when you're supposed to be an upper mobile people and still fight wars. Nevertheless, this is the millennium. You got a church on every corner. But this time you got a mosque, more mosques than you had 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is a war that's going to fight against Islamic people. And yet there's no clergy people in the United States jumps up and oppose the war. At all? About nothing? About nothing. But this is interesting because this also goes back into that preacher that's getting paid. It's a clever stroke because Bush, the first thing he did when he got into office, faith, faith. it gave him the faith base initiative. Mm -hmm. And every single church that lets you know what they're really about, are they about money or are they about preaching a doctrine that's supposed to be about moralism, if you want to say that, mm -hmm. or righteousness, why is it that every single Organization, mosque, synagogue, you understand what I'm saying? All of them chose not to speak out. Is it because they got paid off? Mm -hmm. And let you know how much your doggone religion is really worth. It's only expedient based on what kind of money you get. Mm -hmm. That's right. You see what I'm So, this shows you the kind of mentality to try to think of what we really did with. Oh yeah, we love Jesus. <laughs> we love the Lord. And we love the Lord. <laughs> but that go out the door when homeboy is paying the money. Mm -hmm. And we'll send our children to war and get killed mm -hmm. so we can keep this goddamn check. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not kill. But not only thou shall not kill, it's not a matter of somebody over there on another part of the world, two people fighting that don't live in this country, and you oppose them. No, your own children are going to fight. Mm -hmm. And not only do you not say anything, you send them off with a blessing of the so-called Lord. Mm -hmm. You sanction it through the religion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so here goes again, I want to ask all the black Christians, because they claim they love Jesus, love Jesus so much. How is it that the black Christians didn't stand up you don't have to have no preacher guide. You must ask yourself that at the end of the day. Your own conscience. Your own conscience. Your own heart. Your own conscience. You know what I'm saying? But it goes to show you this. Um, does it mean that every protest we have in this country is devised by somebody else? Mm -hmm. Because obviously we don't ever do nothing unless somebody rallies us to do it. Right. But my point is, where is the own consciousness? And my point here is, if you say you love Jesus so much, you quit to point out Jesus uh, every individual you meet, mm -hmm. why all of a sudden you suspend that? 
You know what I'm saying? You see people, you meet them. How you doing? Oh, he's blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah. He truly to be praised. I didn't ask you about your religious standards. Yeah. I asked how the yeah. fuck were you, uh, uh, you know, in a right. basic thing. Oh, I'm blessed. He truly do. He truly do be. He truly <laughs> ready to be praised. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> now, you make it a point to know that you are Jesus man. Oh, Jesus woman. religious, all this here. But now the wall on. And now all of a sudden, you suspend all of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you select him on what you going to say Jesus about. Mm-hmm. So you give me something that's minor when I say, how you doing? And you go, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed. Let's, say, let's, let's look at this. You say, okay, I'm saying something very minor. Now look at this. See how your Jesus goes. I say, how you doing? You can very well omit Jesus and go, I'm doing fine today. I'm a little under the weather. Right. And all that. But yeah, you're going to give me all this Jesus stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, He's worthy to be praised and all of this. And I just ask you how you doing. Right. And then I ask you about the goddamn war, mm-hmm. which is something that Jesus is supposed to be directly into, mm-hmm. and you don't say nothing about it. At all. That's backwards. Yeah. You said that's backwards. So we're still, here goes again, we still talk about mental illness. What mental illness is a process when the dots ain't connected. When things are so irrational that they don't make no damn sense. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, that it is, uh, I mean, it, it, it is basically going to a psychological problem. And we see this in the community. And I take for instance, now here he goes another one. Just breaking down this church. You got these black preachers, Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, um, Fred Price. Mm-hmm. And their whole concept here is to be blessed financially. Your prosperity, you know, prosperity based on how much you give to the church. Mm-hmm. Based on how much you'll get back. And, and how much you'll get back. How much you're going to get back. Mm-hmm. And how much you're going to give to the church. And God is now into collecting cash. He's a motherfucking pimp. Mm-hmm. Bitch better have my money. Yeah. So that's what God is saying now. Bitch better have my money. <laughs> So now God done came to a pimp-ass motherfucker. Now I'm going to ask you this particular question. How grown people, educated people, can sit up in a church and say, well, I want to ask this question. What was the type of God into? A hundred years prior, fifty years prior, when we didn't have no fucking money, Mm -hmm. was he pissed off at us? I'm trying to figure this out now. You talk about God's going to bless you based on how much you give. Mm-hmm. Well, what was God doing when you had people who didn't have no money? Let alone. Mom, mom and grandma. Mom and grandma. Mm-hmm. All I'm going to say is here. Well, what does God do for people on the other side of town? Don't have nothing. They don't have shit. Mm-hmm. Where is this God coming from? Now, this is the concept here. Now, to show you the government thing, this is a government process, government agent. The government, because they study us around the clock. Around the clock. When we sleep and they study us. That's right. They had known about 30 years ago. They said, look, this is what's going to have to happen. With with a certain geo-socio-economic progress of black people. Their views on Christianity might change. They might begin to wake up and go, hey, we're educated now. We're educated now. We make about $100,000 a year, some of us, a few of us, something, but most of us make about a roughly about $40,000 a year to $50,000 a year, which put, still puts us firmly in the upper lower class that we call middle class. But still yet, we're making more money than we made before. And some people make a great deal of money. Mm-hmm. We're the, we're the, we're the, we, we are the seventh spending nation on the planet. We're right behind Spain. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, and, and, and what we consume and what we spend. Now, they knew that some of them niggas might get to wake up and go, hey, some bullshit mm-hmm. about this Jesus shit. Yeah, that's right. So they said we can't let our upward mobile nigga get ahead mm-hmm. of us. So what we need to do is we need to 
Taylor, a preacher, and a religious doctrine is called prosperity. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Prosperity theology. Mm -hmm. To suit mm -hmm. the, the now newly emerged Buffy. <laughs> you know, they call it yuppie. Yep, yep, yep. yeah. The Buffy nigga, that's, you know, are the black capitalists. Right. He has to have a religion that is conducive to him that fits his lifestyle. Otherwise, he might go, no, fuck that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I might get into some shit that might yeah. be conducive to something else. Uh -huh. So what the government did is they got a group of these government agents. They started this shit back in the 1930s on a trial basis with Reverend Ike. Remember Reverend Ike? <laughs> now, it's interesting here. He, but at least he was straight up. He was straight up. <laughs> but we used to look at Reverend Ike by his money as a form of humor. Right. We used to laugh at Reverend Ike. He was a joke. He was a joke. And he used to be, we used to look at him as a form of humor whenever we wanted to resort, <laughs> a resort to a charlatan. Right. It was straight up about it. You don't have nothing to do with your money. Give me your money. Yeah. And I'll do what, right. I'll tell you what to do with it. Right. We, we used to look at that as comical and as a joke. Right. Because we know that the basic structure of the black church you understand what I'm saying? Was not this particular uh, money grubbing pill pillism. But now all the preachers are about that right there now. But now what <laughs> used to be a joke about 30 years ago, in, in the 1970s, is the standard. Is the standard now, <laughs> and is now synonymous <laughs> with Jesus, God, or whoever whatnot that's in the upper room. <laughs> yeah. It is the standard. So what used to be a joke to black people who had common sense and say, God damn it, we've had this church since we were fucking poor. Right. When we didn't have shit, we've always had the church. Right. And so for Reverend Ike to come 30 years ago, that was a joke. Because mm -hmm. we knew that it didn't have anything to do with whether you had money or like everybody was poor, and we still had a church on every corner. That's right. Now it is the standard for black people who got money, and because money is the true religion in this country, and most people who have money find out that that is a religion. They need a theology to go along with that. You see what I'm saying? Well, you know, they got churches here in, in Maryland. Man, you got to fill out applications. Man, they got direct deposit, all kinds of shit. Direct deposit applications. You got to show your W-2 form. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you, man. And one, one guy, he's a conscious brother. He beat the girl over the head because she wasn't conscious. But he, he got her into consciousness. You know what I'm saying? She was semi, but you know how it is with tradition. And I understand that what she wanted to get married in a church because her mother had cancer and was getting ready to die. Right. So it was fitting for her to go. To do it like that. And do it that way because she wanted to give the mother. They had even took the church and the wedding and moved it up to an earlier date. Because they didn't, they didn't want the mother to pass on. And I think the mother passed on right after the wedding. So they had to go through the church, you see what I'm saying, to, to, please, to, 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 to please the mother or to be where the mother was mm -hmm. before she died. But here's a conscious person up in there, and the first thing he said, the guy told him, Mom, we need your W-2 form. I'm giving you my W-2. They said, we can't marry you. If we don't know your W-2 form, because he is a potential donor right. to the church. That's crazy, man. Lunatic. You see, we're talking about people. You are a financial institution to them. So they are lobbying for you, you to be a person of the church based on your finances. That's right. And if you don't have finances, it might be the point where they might reject you from you coming to the church. That's right. Now, this weird. Let's show you the savagery of it. Black people had one choice in this doggone country. No matter what, you had the right to go to whatever church you wanted to go to in the black community. Now, since when you got to the point where these people got to put you on application to accept you in a church that in the 1960s on back, they didn't even lock the doors of the church. That's right. You remember the church they didn't even... Right, they, right. We were so humane until you could keep the church open and they didn't even have to lock the doors to the damn church. They didn't start doing that to the 80s. But what, what, what happens to the church when they say, come as you are? Come as you are. Now, I was telling you what about talking about the, about the system, the nice system that you talk to. 
เชื่อมบ่ไอ้ทรเชื่อเทบ่เทเอมิงเอาจิตดูดิสเนตบนที่กินบีนบีนเชื่อเนี่ยนี่มันคือเรื่องแบบไหมโอเคยูโน่คำนี้ยูโน่ไอ้ไอ้เราบอกว่า since when they had a dress standard right or 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 a certain way that you had to be right in order to be yeah since when did this have to do anything with God you want to be God and you going to hell for wearing a tongue ball but whereas a man has whereas a man has on a necktie that is designed based on European freakism as a static symbol for the Europeans where necktie points down to the penis that's right that's right you see what I'm saying There's all types of European fashion that's based on sexual stuff. That's right. Not necessarily saying that being sexually active or anything got anything to do with that, but I'm trying to say it's a double standard. Right. And you didn't research that. You automatically just took it with no question. No question. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's, it's this type of thing here. But here it is again. They check your W-2 form. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they do all of this stuff. They got committees, all kinds of stuff. Committees based on finances, <laughs> you know. And my point here is, here goes again, because this is the upper mobile. I'm trying to figure out is thought, and I do believe now, in a society. We talk about mental illness. I do believe now that thought is obsolete. I don't even think. I think secretively. Now listen to me. What I'm saying here. Now get this. I think secretively we can be into a series of regimental living, mm-hmm. whereas you got certain patterns that set for you every day that you don't even have to think. In other words, people would be 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 functioning off of automation, automatic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Automation. Yeah. Until you look up and you find out that thought is obsolete. Because you always ask this question, what was this motherfucker thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this is becoming common. Yeah. Place every hour. Yeah. <laughs> so you're talking about a automation, a certain regimental prank that you do every day that you don't even have to function. And although it might be sophisticated, you get in your car, you put on the cell phone, you go to work, you do what you told, you come back. It's such a regimental living and tool. The process of thought has all but deteriorated <laughs> and become some type of ancient arcane function <laughs> that used to be used to occur in humans. Right. This is the experiment because I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, and you know we know we talk about because when we become conscious as conscious black people, we are constantly amazed at how not what the people in the street do. But how is it you can have certain people, your so-called learned? That's what I'm talking about. That would think this way. But then again, when you look at the basic education, it's the same regimental automation on how they give you the process to learn. Here's the syllabus. Go by what this says. Complete these classes. Pass these tests. Write these papers, and bam, you certified. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's a job. Wear this suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Do this task. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go to this function. Ask no question. Ask no question. Get recertified every two years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, in so many words. And pay your taxes. Pay your taxes, and then this. Then this is the other point. You get into conversation with humans, and it is not fashionable for you. To speak out of line of being politically correct, so it's not fashionable for you to come up with some shit way out of the corner, way out of the the certain basic functions of conversation. You know what I'm mean? saying? So here go, you can't even come with no new thought because you might speak out of place. You don't want people to think you crazy. Mm-hmm. So all the conversation is what people. Want to hear, mm-hmm. and not what they ought to hear. Mm-hmm. Now we know this because I just did a lecture yesterday on concepts of shit that's so remote. <laughs> so if a person wasn't trained to understand that they're going to a lecture to learn something new and really try to learn something, thinking they're going to a lecture for regurgitation to also um, to 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 co-sign on what they already know, they would think, "Oh God, this motherfucker here, out of his mind, mm-hmm. the shit that he is saying." Right. 
And they don't understand the very, for the mere fact that you learn something new, that is what knowledge is. Knowledge is not supposed to be familiar. confirming okay. something that you already know. It's not supposed to be familiar. Right. Yeah. For the mere fact, you know what I'm saying? For the mere fact, it is the way it is. Um, that is out of the ordinary means that that is knowledge, like take for instance, which also has to do going back to black psychology of black people. Because let us make a slave is let us make a child. Mm -hmm. A child borders on the familiar. Right. It doesn't like change. Mm -mm. That's why you must force it to change. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like to study. It likes to do what it likes to do. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It can be very lazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, but I got to give it this because see, children are inquisitive. Yeah, they are. No, I can't, I can't put this on the child. This is more like an animal. 